and is not too far away from campus. You haven't noticed it though, have you? They closed that cemetery in 1871 and moved the bodies here. So we will see a few gravestones that are older than 1870. Those are gravestones that were moved, hopefully the bodies were too, from that first cemetery. And so I think I've shared with you that when I was in graduate school, this was my specialty, right? What we have to look at here today is a kind of a typical 19th century cemetery. These cemeteries were considered gardens. And so as we go through, you'll see that there's a variety of trees and ornamental plantings. If we could have been here 100 years ago, this would have been a, this would have been a sight to see because there would have been a lot of really nice landscaping, a lot of flower beds, and this would definitely have been a much more attractive area. Okay? As time's gone on, the only way for the cemetery to continue to fund itself and to pay for maintenance has been to sell more plots. So the people who originally designed this did not intend for the graves to be as close together as they are. They didn't intend it to be more of like a park atmosphere where you'd walk in, in, you know, in amongst the trees and the ornamental plantings. In the 19th century, it was very common to come picnic in cemeteries and to tend graves. In our society, we've gotten away from that and most people rarely visit their, their deceased loved ones and almost never help to maintain the grave. And so one of the f consequences of that is there have been changes, changes from the way this used to look. In archaeology, that's called taphonomy. I'll put that on the board when we're in on Thursday if somebody helps me to remember. Taphonomy describes all the things that happen to an archaeological site after the materials have been deposited. And so one of the things here is they would have had cast iron fences, wrought iron fences, going around many of these graves. Why? But they're gone now. Why would they be gone now? So it takes up too much space? Mm, they, they could be, but that's not really the... The real reason's even more basic than that. So it's not fire-related? In no? rust? No. Remember we talked about maintenance? <laughs> it takes too much maintenance? It's too hard to mow. Oh. So a oh. lot of the things that were once here have now been removed, or we'll see a few that are left that are really badly damaged, from the mowers. Right? Because it costs too much to individually maintain graves, right? The only way that the city can make this work is if the guy can get on his little tractor and just drive. If he has to get out and weed whack everything, then it's not economical. So as much as possible, those things have been removed. Okay? Also, there's been vandalism in this cemetery. We'll see some of that today, some signs of that. So that affects what we have left. Okay? And frankly, there's been some outright theft. Okay? There's some etiquette I'd ask. Please don't smoke in the cemetery. Please don't eat or drink in the cemetery. Okay? Not because that's really offensive, but because I have problems with students who do those things. And then when you finish your cigarette, where does the butt go? On the ground, right? We're not, we're gonna, we're not gonna litter the cemetery. Okay? Another thing is as we walk around, at the time some of these people were buried, it was considered um, inappropriate to walk or stand on top of the grave. Now some of these, it's hard to figure out where the body actually lies. So if you just kind of try to follow me and avoid standing right in front of a tombstone, you should be okay in terms of not standing on people. Okay, again, trying to be respectful of their beliefs even though so today it's not so much our belief, it certainly was their belief. Okay. One of the things you'll find in cemeteries is they're often on the highest point of ground. And as we go, you can obviously see this hill in front of us that rises. As you move along this higher ground, that's where the oldest graves in the cemetery tend to be. Okay. We'll start with this. Okay, this person is Margaret Ruddy. And she has a little cast iron, these are called grave markers or flag holders, okay? And so this would be designed to hold a little American flag, okay? And so Margaret was a member of an organization that's symbolized by this marker. It's called the Women's Relief Corps. And if we look, Margaret was born in 1848. So at the time of the Civil War, she would have been a teenager, 15, 16, 17, okay? She dies in 1897. 
at the time of, after the Civil War, Civil War veterans had their own organization. It was called the Grand Army of the Republic. It doesn't exist anymore, obviously, because the last Civil War veteran died in the 1950s. But there was a ladies auxiliary to the Grand Army of the Republic, right? So the women had their own organization that they could belong to and have something to do while the men had their stuff. And so that was the Women's Relief Corps, WRC. And so this, this marker symbolizes her membership in that organization. When I talk about sometimes things are missing because they've been stolen, these markers tend to show up on eBay, right? And so there were more, when I first started to come to the cemetery, there were many more of these than there are still remaining. All right, let's go up the hill. Yeah, where are you going? I thought you were going earlier. I don't know.